Well put, Lou. I'm at a very unique community studio here in Newark, New Jersey, where they focus not only on a fine, time-honored art, but also on the well-being and future of those right here in the community, giving new meaning to the words, glass roots. I'm here with Barbara Heisler. She is the executive director of Glassroots. And Barbara, I'm really excited to be here. It's just a wonderful place. So can you tell me a little bit about the mission of Glassroots? So Glassroots ignites and builds the cultural and economic vitality of Newark, focusing on underserved youth and young adults and using the transformational qualities of glass. You've had wonderful success with those students. And I think part of the, the, the focus of this is transformation transform some, some really students with some at-risk uh, possibilities, right? Absolutely. So our students in our daytime programs, our, our FLAME and our B &E programs, come to us from Newark High Schools. Newark itself has a graduation rate of about 70% out of high right. school. Our high school students, 100% over the last two years, who have been eligible to graduate from high school have graduated. That's amazing. Our Hallmark program, the program that we were founded with, is our business entrepreneurship program. Yeah. And that's a program where young people are with us through the full academic year. And through a series of classes, students learn the ins and outs of creating small business. And by the end of the program, when we're running our Shark Tank, our business competition. They're standing there proudly, talking into a mic, selling their product, defending their business model, have lots of confidence. You know that they're gonna succeed in the world. We also have um, our workforce development programs. Those are newer programs for us. Those are for post high school students. So okay. focusing again on underserved young adults, 18 to 25 ish. Gotcha. And those are programs where we actually use glass to create income for young people. Whether it's our scientific glass blowing program, teaching young people how to make that glass that's used in pharmaceutical and chemistry labs, right. or making beaded jewelry in our craft entrepreneurship program, where young women learn how to create sustainable supplemental income, sure. or through a new program, which is a gateway to college for many of our students. And you know, I'm really interested in seeing the hot shop where you actually make the glass. But first, I want to talk to one of your students who's actually come back to be an instructor. I started here when I was around nine or 10 years old. My mom signed me up for a few summer camp. And at first, I didn't even want to come. I was like, oh, that's like silly. I don't want to do it. And then when I came here, I started making beads in the flame shop, and I just loved it. I fell in love with it, and I kept coming back and coming back and coming back. And they were like, oh, do you want to help teach a class? I was like, yeah, sure. And then they were like, do you want to teach your own class? I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so all the glass we get is from Murano, Italy. It all comes in these long uh, rod form. Oh, okay. And then we'll take it and then melt it over the fire here, uh, over this torch, gets to around 2,000 degrees just below. Sure. Um, it melts the glass, becomes molten, and then you can wrap it either around these rods if you're making beads, and then manipulate it with different tools, or you can add different colors to it. And then uh, for sculpture like these marbles, it's just made at the end of a rod. We're here in the hot shop, and I tell you, they don't call it that for nothing. Those reheating chambers behind me go over 2,000 degrees. And we're here with Alex, who is a glass blower at Glass Roots. And Alex, you know, it's really a fascinating art that probably a lot of people don't know much about. So tell me, what's the process of glass making? So what we do is we start in our hot shop. Um, it's our big hot room where we get all of, we do all of our glass making. Um, the glass actually lives in a furnace. It's at 2,000 degrees, and it stays at 2,000 degrees 365, 24-7, so we never turn it off. When we're ready to actually make our piece, we take uh, a punty or a glow pipe, which is basically a big metal straw, and we gather the glass onto the pipe, and we take it out and we work on it at our workbench, at our glass blowing bench. Um, that's where we manipulate the glass with our tools and the heat and gravity and blow it up and to make our glass objects. Now, how long does it take for someone to become proficient at glass making? I would say it's a lifelong learning thing. You never, you never stop learning. Um, to be able to be comfortable, I'd say it takes a couple years. It's really, really rewarding. Um, it's really awesome to watch their progress through the beginning stages, through when they feel more comfortable and more proficient. It's a lot of focus and dedication and motivation and just being able to keep doing something very frustrating over and over again. And it, I think it really changes people. So as you can see, the folks here at Glass Roots shape not only glass into beautiful works of art, they also help shape the hearts and minds of young people 
giving them the skills and the tools to craft a beautiful life.